We will have crazy comet catchers, insane huge mining stations, great battleships and more, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to get more info on base building and resource management games. What's up guys, it's Tenkosh and today in Final Factory we are doing blueprints guy. I will show you the best blueprints available for you for early game that will help you out drastically and that will allow you to make your base more effective. So anyway, the thing is, I wanted to start with the mining things, but I'm being annoyed by enemies. So first, we will go over the combat ship because, guys, it's amazing. So this is the ship and it's pretty huge. You will find all the blueprints in the wiki. The link will be in the video description. So you can just copy paste it just like that. If you don't know, uh, in order to get the blueprint, you will open the blueprint book and uh, select what you want to get here. Select it, paste it and uh, place it wherever you want you can rotate it etc moreover if you are importing the blueprint so let's go get something like a large mining station here you select the code over here copy it go into the game where is it and paste paste it with ctrl v there we go that will allow you to place the thing that you copied so right let's paste yeah look at that that's huge so yeah we can build several of those ships no problem uh they are pretty expensive though and they require quite a high tier stuff you need to actually quick start it so when you will just finish setting it up with your drones it will all flash with like no not enough structure and everything you will need well in order to operate it basically you will need to put some uh, energy into singularity power stations and uh once you will put some ice here once you will put some ice here it will start working at some point there we go so when the ice is where you need it it will start working moreover since you got so many laser towers they have to be fed with ice so uh here we have some ice production and we have the second copy of the ship that's already fueled with all the storage field and uh yeah it requires some high-tech stuff singularity power station but uh after we'll test it i will show you how you can make the smaller one with the current tech that you have so how do you control the ships that's actually pretty interesting there are two ways first one you can click it um, I think you gotta click, well, overall, the ship that have the engines, and you can move it. And just, you know, left-click it, and it will fly there. So there we go, it's moving around. Pretty easy, right? Uh, also, you can press X, and then you will be controlling the ship. You can rotate it with E and Q, and move around with W, A, S, D, and that's actually pretty dope. So let's go and decimate some enemies take a look at that we are at very easy difficulty right now because i'm just testing things out and uh we are just massacring the enemies with this ship it's really beautiful i like it it looks really nice so for now let's park it for reloading it's pretty straightforward we leave the ship we select the ship we land it and we gotta properly align the storage areas with the howlers here and that should be okay so let's see it's landing bam sweet and it's being refueled right here so you can use this technique in order to create different types of ships that can move around once you will get the command core you can actually add the landing zones here as well so it will be easier for you to control stuff uh we'll talk about that a bit later so pretty good ship if you want it the link will be on the wiki let me show you how to create the easier option like the lighter ship that won't require that high tech resources but it will still need some research so yeah as always it will require a core and the rocket adapter that's basically the core thing one two three you will also need a structure called exploration center so you can scout the things around so you can see stuff around yourself there we go and uh, then you need to connect them there are Wow, that was scary. The, you have several options how you can do that. I would advise if you don't need to transfer resources, but here we do, to use armor blocks because they transfer the power, they transfer the heat, and they can be your structural elements without actually uh, going into the stability cost. So that's really nice. If you need to transport the resources though, connectors are your best bet because they transport resources, right? Another thing that you will need is storage because without storage, you won't be able to 
store your resources so you can do something like that very basic you don't need that many early on and if you want to have many you can chain them so you can have several of those things chained together um, that will allow you to store more stuff and then of course you will need the laser tourists the problem with the laser tourists is that they need to be fed resources as well so in order to use them you will need to connect them with the uh, connectors as well so there we go let's add some uh, that will be more than enough for a basic ship early on in order to protect yourself from the enemies and another cool thing that you can connect other laser turrets next to those laser turrets like feeding them resources from those in order to optimize your damage basically but don't go too hard on it because um it might get really expensive honestly like 5 to 10 laser turrets on normal difficulty will be more than enough early on and we have more than that now the armor blocks as i said they will connect your entire thing and uh, you would like to have let's say several layers of armor like usually one layer won't be enough it's always nice to add some defense platforms just in case to have some protection and once again they can be either connected with struts that will lower the overall station stability requirement and uh, we will need something to get power and cooling as well there we go we got some basics here and this ship already have all the power we need all the heat dissipation and overall it's pretty nice all we need to do is to fill it with something you can go with any type of resource they will all be used to feed like whatever or all, all these things inside the ship so let's fill it manually this time it will be faster and it's also a good idea to prioritize the output where uh, your engine is because that will allow you to fly even if your lasers are out of uh, fuel and you will be able to properly fight enemies in that case so there we go that's our ship we can add more stuff or leave it as it is and let's take it for a ride yeah as you can see it's way slower than the last ship because we got only one engine and a lot of weight but it still moves and it can still make a dent in the enemy so let's try to find someone to fight and then we'll move on to other blueprints there we go the enemies are here and the lasers are working really nice as well and you can add a lot of stuff to your ships to make them work but uh those are essentials you would like to have some repair platforms as well because um they will allow you to um regenerate armor as well so you won't be destroyed by the enemies while flying around and yeah if you are happy with your ship and you want to save it as a blueprint land it uh use ctrl c or this copy button select the ship and there you go that's your ship that you can copy you can save the new blueprint and give it a name tiny little fighter and there we go the blueprint is ready you can open it up here and paste it whatever you want same for all the blueprints that will be pasted you can place them somewhere and then save as your own blueprint so now uh let's move on to the mining because we cleared some mines and we actually want to see how it's working so the mining blueprint this one is nice we have two options here first one is optimize mining blueprint there we go this is basic mining station that's actually really efficient in terms of the stability and efficiency it it's not so productive but it's effective so you can place that and that will work for you just nicely don't forget to adjust the filters for the ore that you have here so we're at iron let's place iron here shift uh right click shift left click there we go we pasted the recipe here and once we'll get the ships they will start working let's get to bauxite now so this is steroid here it has a lot of resources we can do something more crazy especially if you're not playing at the car difficulty you can go insane with your stuff so uh, we will go to the large mining station here the large mining station have two blueprints at them first one is miners those are blocks of those things and you need to place four of them at any side of the asteroid be careful though it's really hard to properly fit because asteroids um they can be pretty funky about the placement of things so let's try to get four of them and we will start here then here then here then here there we go as you can see one of those is a bit lower that means that its supply will be a bit slower but it doesn't matter that much now let's add the refinery part so the second blueprint is refinery which is that big and you want to place it as close as possible to the main one if you are using inserter bots early game 
that will allow you, well, uh, to refine the ore into the proper stuff that you can transport easier. It it's not that useful later game when you need a couple of different elements because you might want to transport ore. But early game, that's a way to go because you can refine bauxit into the uh, low density structure that will be way easier and cheaper to transport. So there we go. And uh, now uh, we will need some bots in order to work because we don't have any. So uh, we have another blueprint for that. Miner bot production add-on. This is a small thing that can be attached to any storage of uh, low density structure that will allow it to pick up from any of them it can be this storage it can be this delivery or anything it can be close it can be far but it will produce your mining drone so let's place two of those right over here so it will look good and now we will need to feed them with the low density structure if we have it we don't since i've been idling for too long now i have to kind of make it work most of the blueprints will have to be started manually so uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's place... Where is it? Bauxit here into those refineries. So it will be uh, low density structure crafted. Oh, it's being mo moved away straight away. But the bot got some. And just like that, it will start working. It will start getting the resources it needs. And over time, they will start crafting things. And well, yeah. So yeah, once the miners will start running, this thing will start working. And eventually, it will launch. And it will allow you to well uh enjoy automatic production let's wait a little bit to for it to fire up to get more miners to start harvesting meanwhile i will tell you about the mechanics here so uh, the mining stations have a bit low energy here if you point over you can see that notification at the bottom bam they have seven uh kilowatt requirement but have only five kilowatt power the problem is you can't fit more of those over here if those uh refineries will be too close you can fit more by placing two additional uh, solar panels, one solar panel each, like here, because it's further away, and have the full capacity. We don't really need that many. Or, yeah, we do. That will increase the structure a little bit, and it will give you a bit more of uh, productivity. It's not really necessary, but it can work. Moreover, if you will use the cargo drones for transportation, it can be done by placing this thing further away and it will be faster, honestly. You can add more of that stuff on the transportation thing, so it can be adjusted. But as a basics, this is the way to go. This is easy to set up and it works very, very nice. And yeah, once you start going, once everything will start working, it will get faster and faster and it will work better and better. And what's cool about that, you can just copy it, rotate it, and place another copy of it over here, if you will be able to place it right, because those things can be pretty finicky to place. And that's why we have the modular minor placement, because you can't really do it that easily by just copying and pasting everything. So yeah, let's add more of those in order to get higher productivity. There we go. And sometimes you might not be able to fit all eight. That will allow you to have only half of the base so let's copy half of it, just like that, and paste it over here, which is the right side again. This one. There we go. And uh, just like that, you can totally decimate the poor asteroid because you will have insane amount of miners mining everywhere. You can have crazy production of bots, crazy production of everything. Look at that. Those guys are busy and things are flowing. Here is another free blueprint for you while things are heating up. This is a small exploration center blueprint that you can copy and paste anywhere. It's really cheap. It doesn't have that much of a stability load and it will allow you to see everything around you when you are exploring somewhere far away or building outposts. Although on the harder difficulties, I wouldn't advise having too many of them early on because um, it will still have additional stability, which you don't want. But usually, you guys don't play that hard difficulty. Look at that. Things are getting busy here. And oh my god, this is amazing. The poor asteroid is going... Look at that. All remaining is going down at insane speed. And all that stuff can be transported to your base for refinement. Or if you have some pesky asteroid that you don't like and you want to get rid of it, this would be the best layout for you that you can place... <laughs> This is cool, I like that. And now the drones are being built and flying far away to other miners. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty efficient build. And now we have an, 
my god. We have enough resources to move on to other stuff. That's our basic production center working here. As you can see, it's smaller. It's not that aggressive, but in terms of the stability, this one costs only 49 for one, two, three, four, five, six miners. Uh, this one, uh, overall cost of one, this segment is 200. Uh, 19 stability i think so it's tremendous cost in terms of the stability but it works by the way if you don't have the large cargo hold you can replace it with the normal one it's not a problem you can use a normal cargo holds here and uh, it's very adjustable so you don't really need to have the high tier stuff in order to make it work by the way guys if you want to create your own blueprints and test things out you would like to start a new game custom settings and here you would like to lower well, basically attack frequency. That's the main thing. If the attack frequency is zero, the enemies will never attack you. If you want to have the peaceful playthrough, just remove all that altogether. Although then you won't be able to test your combat things. So I advise to still have enemies at 100% strength and have some camp spawns and everything. So they just won't attack, but you can go explore and take them out. I think uh, Pacifist is the same. It won't allow enemies to spawn. So they will never attack you. You can try that as well. Although in custom mode, you can also enable free build and all tech unlock that will allow you to actually test things out and uh, make blueprints and test them like Ivy. All right, now let's move on to Comet Catchers. Once you will need them, when you will need ice, you will have some troubles because those guys, they destroy everything in their way. And uh, there are some ways how you can do that. First of all, early on, I think this is the best layout. I use it for most of my basic early Comet ca Harvesters and Comet Catchers. There it is. It's pretty simple. It doesn't have that much. Just make sure that it's not pointed towards your base. Otherwise, you know what will happen. It will get destroyed. And what's cool about this one, you don't really need to fire it up. It's working by default. Look at that. Everything is messed up. <laughs> so yeah, you don't need anything special to fire it up. Once you place it, it's ready. It's uh, in outputting the resources straight into the logistics bay. It doesn't have that high structure cost. I think overall it's uh, 34 stability. So it's it doesn't even need the core. And it can be transported away wherever you want, whenever you want. That's pretty cool. Next once you need something more special you would like to have singularity power stations explored uh researched that's not far away but it still requires some research so uh let me clear the area a bit this is the blueprint that's three comet harvesters connected with the struts optimized so this thing have only 55 stability while uh this one have 34 and this have three times more production which is insane uh, actually let me try something I think I tried it before and it didn't did anything. 55, 56, yeah, it, it actually hurts more than helps. It can be optimized further if you will remove some connectors. Uh, those are not, uh, no, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, and place armor blocks here and use inserters, but I don't like it. It looks ugly and it will save you only two stability, but it will work as well because those uh, power stations, they don't need that high input and you can leave the rest over here. The main problem with this setup, uh, not the one that I used before, that those inserter boards might not really keep up once you won't have, uh, once you will have eyes going. So let's see, let's uh, take those things out and see how they will go. Uh, they actually do keep up. They can do that. Nice. So yeah, it can be used like I did before. I kind of like that, but it can be optimized even further. We remove all that. We place this logistics station right here. We place the connectors like that. So that's like a really easy and lightweight way of doing that. We remove that. I wonder if it will work. We connect them here. It will work. That's crazy. And then we put inserters over here. So they will take stuff from the cargo bay and deliver it to those singularity power stations. And now we have 47 stability. This one have 34, this one have 47. You can use that and have insane amount of productivity per stability. Really useful for hard playthroughs, very optimized. I will upload this layout on the wiki if you want that so yeah, here i tried different setups that didn't really work or they did but yeah you can really test things out like that so now once you have this once you have the um comet catchers and the work you can move on 
to getting the greenhouse stations, which are a bit complex, but you can deal with it. I believe in you guys. So, yeah, let's do this. We have this area, and I tested several layouts. This one is a bit ugly, but that's the best one. Let me walk you over those. This is the basic organic component production. Let's take those out so they will start working, and you will see how it works. Here we output the ice that's been delivered to three singularity power stations to power this thing up. It requires a lot of power. That's 200. Really insane, right? And it have only 74 stability, but it can be upgraded further. How does it work? The ice is being uh, routed to those cores. The rest of the ice is being routed to the greenhouse station distributed among them. I tried to put in more stations, but that doesn't seem to work because they actually use up all the ice, five of those. If you get seven, it will be ineffective. I'm being attacked here. That's why you want to have the peaceful uh, settings so the enemies will not attack you. Or maybe they just go from this spawn. So guys, you got the perfect comet catcher here, right? Uh, but you need to find a way to properly place it. Usually, you want to have it at one place, and I will show you several placement options. First one will allow you to transport it to the specific buildings. The building for us will be this greenhouse station right now, because we will need it for the next part of the guide. So let's place additional logistics bay. Let's place two howlers. Bam, bam. Uh, they're called uh, cargo drones, yeah. Then another cargo drone going to it from the sideways. All right. And then we will place those that way. So those ships will deliver it straight to that middle area. And something like that. So that will allow us to have crazy input over here. And it will really fill this up really fast. The only thing that we need to do is to power it up with ice or well anything for that matter once it will start working it will start kicking and once they will get their first co comets we are good once they are refined actually so let's wait and see if we'll have enough time to get the results and yeah once the ice start flowing you're good and you don't have to worry about anything at that point it will be fully automatic the only thing you have to care about is getting energy for your basic logistics factory and there we go that will allow you to have steady supply of ice for whatever. You can use the smaller station, you can use the bigger station, it's up to you. But this thing is really ice hungry, so you would like to export a lot of ice here. And as you can see, it's been instantly used everywhere. So, yeah. So I tried different setups to optimize the station stability. This one is 74. Then I came up with this, which is 70. Not that much of a difference, right? And then I came up with this one, which is 52. So let's go over those. What does this station do? As you already guessed, it's a greenhouse station that produces organic compound recipe. What's unique about this thing, that you will need to have biological substrate supplied, which is being produced in this atomic printer, and it has to be supplied there. But atomic printer have to be fed organic compounds, so the priority of all the production should be feeding this, and then sending extras away. Because of that, we got the station core that have the priority put on the right. And by the way, guys, uh, a small hint for you. You see this arrow? You can rotate the building, and depending on that, you will get a different uh, output priority. So you would like to have arrow pointing upwards, and then the right will be right. Otherwise, if it will be here, the right will be left for us, and things, they won't go well. So yeah, make sure that you have this thing pointing upwards. The same one for junctions when you place them. You have the junction here, and it got that blue... Uh, let me power it up. Yeah, it have that blue thingy at the top. So it should be placed where you want it. That way, its uh, output priority will work properly. So yeah, that's why we have everything being fed up back here, and all the outputs are being sent into the core. That's actually reshuffling everything. This one isn't that great, but here we managed to have really lower stability with the same performance because we replaced the connectors with the inserter boss here and connected the cargo holds with the armor to the main station instead of using the solar panels and it actually worked really, really well. Um, it a bit, it's a bit ugly, I will admit that, but it works. You can actually get extra armor here and you can actually surround it with armor in case if the enemies will come. You will be able to defend it without taking any risks. So nothing will be destroyed. Oh my God, it's even uglier now. 
But yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, that might look a bit better, but in any case, the fact that things are connected with armor blocks provide uh, energy and heat is really nice and you can use it to your advantage while doing that. So 52 stability right here. Once again, this recipe will be on the wiki. You can copy it, paste it in the game and use it yourself. You don't need to manually create those, which is a bit annoying. So now before we end the video, because I showed you most of the things I wanted to show, we have uh, one last step. We want to have crazy ice um factory so in order to do that you use this recipe and you place it a bit further away from each other so one two i think three should be the safest spot i'm not sure exactly if it's two or three one two let's try two this time one two so it's like two blocks to the right and two blocks to the back so uh yeah let's make sure everything is right and yeah there is no easy way to test it and things are expensive so you really don't want to waste them so i will waste them for you let's put the ice here and make it work and we will see if something will be destroyed now so here we got two tiles difference and uh, when the asteroids will come the comets oh, okay it's good so two tiles is enough be careful don't be in the middle of this area Otherwise, things will not end well for you. So this square <laughs> will produce insane amount of that ice for you if you need it. And let's just harvest the ice here and launch the other things as well. And yeah, once you quick start it, it looks amazing. <laughs> Look at that. That's gorgeous. And that's very powerful. That will produce insane amount of ice for you with a pretty low structure cost of 47 each so that's uh, 200 structure um, stability for six of those comet catchers there is probably a way to optimize it even further but for me i think this is pretty good my god this looks dangerous because yeah if you'll be there you will die instantly let me show you other blueprints that i have without talking about them too much i have the four lasers defensive outpost with one defense platform it's, just, it, it's okay but it's not that great this is the miner we had that one before we have the mining miner with the refinery connected to it already and with the production of mining ships uh, that's a comet catcher here that's additional defense platform which is bigger but still not enough for the hard difficulty that's the what's that defense platform even better <laughs> i have a lot of defense platforms here because i'm playing on hard and the enemies they just decimate me this one is defense uh drone outpost i like it all right there we go it's being constructed right now so uh what's unique about this platform that uh it stores the requested unit so um yeah depending on what kind of unit composition you want at the defense platforms you might want to make the blueprints get some right protection get some defense um at my stage of the game i need like half knights half bats and i need a lot of those so basically what i would do i would create this one here another one right here and that's how i would defend my perimeter also it's uh, not really optimized because it have really high stability cost but it can be optimized further i will actually do that and post it later by placing struts look at that it's go it's going lower and stability why am so i care about stability so much guys because um on the relentless difficulty stability is everything like it's really essential to have low stability in order to avoid enemy crazy swarms so 55 instead of 80 already so yeah other than that uh, check the wiki i'm pretty sure the people will add more blueprints over there i will add more blueprints over there and if you have your own cool blueprints you can add them over there as well and yeah guys thank you very much for watching check out the video description for the links wiki my discord other youtube channels all that stuff and don't forget to subscribe and like the video i would appreciate that quite a lot other than that thank you very much for watching it's been stan kosh have a good one bye